Thank you. Hello. Good, uh, good afternoon. So at least there are some people. It's already good. So uh, uh, we are actually a manufacturer of water electrolyzer. So decarbonizing the, the economy is always a huge topic uh, today. But in fact, it was already the case uh, quite some time ago uh, in the industry, although they were not talking about decarbonizing the industry. So what they did actually 19 years ago, they were building already 100 megawatts of water electrolyzer to produce green hydrogen for a process to produce ammonia. So all this decarbonizing uh, topic, although we talk a lot about it, they didn't talk about it before, but we're actually decarbonizing the industry already. So today, only 4% of uh, hydrogen produced is actually coming from water electrolyzer, and most of them are actually coming from uh, fossil fuel uh, electricity, so not really green hydrogen. So we, we can say about 1% is green hydrogen. It means that the 99 other percent here from hydrogen produced worldwide are actually emit emitting CO2. So the potential to decarbonize is quite high here with water electrolysis. Uh, I, I just would like then to go a bit, because it's called a technical forum, try to show you how this kind of plan is looking like and a real green hydrogen plan in operation today. So just to give you a first idea how it looks like, a water electrolyzer is an assembly of a balance of plant made on a, of a cell stack uh, with uh, some rectifier and transformer to bring this huge amount of power you need to dissociate water. This is completed with gas separators because you dissociate water in hydrogen and oxygen. So you get them out through two different channels. And this hydrogen is then uh, cleaned and usually compressed to go through the customer process. So that's usually how such a plant works. So one of these examples, and a real green hydrogen uh, plant, so to decarbonize uh, an industry, is actually located in Malaysia. That's how it looks like. So this is a 25 megawatt plant producing 5,500 normal cubic meter. And the quite interesting thing about this plant, electricity is coming from hydro. So it's a complete green plant producing green hydrogen. It was not meant to, to be like that, but it turned out to be the most effective way at that specific site. So this single plant can offset around 43 thousand tons of CO2 per year if you compare it to a traditional way to produce hydrogen so steam methane reformers so they save actually a pretty significant amount of CO2 there for a real industrial process this plant is made of cell stacks where you produce this hydrogen gives you an idea how it looks like these stacks are kind of two meters high 25 meters long and they have 11 of these actually at site there so pretty big plant there so core of the technology, core of the electrolyzer. This is then completed with a balance of plant around it. On the left side, you have a so-called scrubber. Basically what it does, it cleans your hydrogen from the KOH, which is in the solution of the water electrolyzer, to get after to a further cleaning process. Right side, gas holder. The gas holder is actually acting as a balancing uh, equipment between the user line and your uh, electrolyzer to be sure that you deliver the hydrogen properly to the, to the customer. And then because this specific technology is producing hydrogen at atmospheric pressure, you add some compression. So we have four or five here to get to the required pressure uh, of the process. This is completed with a cooling tower. Water electrolysis inefficiency is heat generation. You, get, you need to get rid of it and with purification system to get to very high purity of hydrogen. So that's how a complete water electrolyzer plant looks like today and saving over 40,000 tons of CO2 every year. So problem today, this is a kind of niche market. As I was showing, this is maybe representing 1% of the hydrogen produced today coming from green uh, electricity. So how can you get to the next stage to produce more of this green hydrogen there? This is happening today already. As you might be aware, uh, wind and solar is becoming more and more uh, competitive and cheaper. And this is helping the hydrogen industry. 
because the cheaper the electricity, the more optimal your green hygiene will be. When you look at a big plant like I showed just before, you can consider that CAPEX, so the equipment itself represents about 25%, 75% will be OPEX, and most of it, maybe 74.5%, is gonna be electricity cost. And that's where you see how important electricity become and why the push for cheaper electricity is sustaining a decarbonization, a decarbonization of the industry there on the hydrogen side. So that's critical point, so electricity. The second one, of course, is the capex, still 25% for big capacities. And what we see here, on the left side, you see a comparison between the standard way to produce hydrogen today, so cracking natural gas, and water electrolyzer. So when you look at the development of our cost, you can see actually that water electrolysis on the CAPEX side is going to get way cheaper than SMRs quite soon there. So you end up not really with a CAPEX problem anymore, but really to get this cheap electricity. This is also completed with the fact that the lifetime of water electrolyzers, the core technology, is increasing over year. So you get a CAPEX that is lasting longer and being as efficient over the years helping to decarbonize all this industry. Did just a few words about Nell, didn't explain it today. So Nell is a pure player in the hygiene industry, uh, focusing on water electrolyzer, atmospheric alkaline and PEM technology, and on hygiene fueling stations. So I, I explained you a bit how we could decarbonize the industry there on the hygiene side. And then you have heard a lot about uh, sector coupling. Uh, so this decarbonization of the industry can actually be extended to a lot of other industry sectors. You saw this already thousands of times. I just want to show this slide uh, because the next example, going from industry to actually transport, how you can decarbonize your transport with large scale electrolyzers. That's an example, you're pretty sure heard about that project in the States, uh, Nikola project. Uh, when you look actually at the size of this project, we are talking about thousands of trucks uh, driving around. Every of these fueling stations uh, being between eight and 32 tons of hydrogen a day, and that's where you get to large scale uh, water electrolyzer. So that's only a slide there, but this is happening already. They have this first uh, test fueling station uh, almost operational and that's where you see large capacity electrolyzers with the advantage to use this for industries and be able to reduce capex combined with cheap electricity to decarbonize all your transport industry so it gives you an idea uh, of course you can decarbonize get cheap electricity but your technology needs to follow also so what has been done here uh, at Nell, for example, is actually to develop larger scale electrolyzer to get to economies of scale. So we are talking about 80 megawatt systems, uh, which can offset around 24,000 tons a year of CO2. So the supply chain needs to follow also, of course. So we have all the supply chain in place and developing the capability to be able to follow this larger quantity demand there. Water electrolyzers have been a small market by definition in the past, so going to large scale requires you to adapt your supply chain too. That's a problem that goes with it and that needs to be solved. Just a last example to show, uh, this is another product in Switzerland for a thousand trucks there. So this is approximately 80 to 100 megawatt of electrolyzer if you want it to make green hydrogen. Still, it needs to come from green electricity also, of course. So you see that for that technology, proton exchange membrane technology, large capacity is also taking place slowly there. It's not at the level of alkaline today, but it's uh, catching up there. So there also the capacity can go up to 20 megawatts there, which can offset about 34,000 tons of CO2 per year. So that's where you get to this very large scale system and the capability to have a real impact on decarbonization. Uh, 
just CapEx to show how it evolved, this is a study actually that was made by uh, EHS uh, Market. What we believe when you s look at the purple line there, this is where we see ourselves in the future. Uh, we believe that water electrolysis can become way more cost competitive and a way faster pacer. So meaning that this decarbonization of transport and industry could actually happen sooner than what people expect there. So what needs to happen there? Because you have the technology, you have some niche projects, uh, and you have actually price of electricity that can be fairly cheap for renewable applications there, for, for coming from renewables. So what's, what else do you need to make it really the big thing? So there are just few ideas here. That's how I will uh, end up my presentation. Uh, first, it's to go from demo to real impl implementation projects. So we have few very large scale projects, but this is not enough to sustain a real big uh, business and to make large scale uh, water electrolyzer. Nicola, for example, is helping to achieve this. You still need R&D and technology development because although water electrolyzers are there since 90 years, there is still a huge uh, potential to optimize the technology and find new ways to make water electrolysis today. So there, there is really a potential to get where people want to go today. Yeah? Serious supporting scheme, uh, in the end, it's gonna come kind of from politics there to support the scheme to decarbonize the economy. And that's what we hope will happen also. We see it more and more to have strong support for politicians. Uh, we hope this is gonna continue in the future and allow to have a complete decarbonized society there. Uh, that's pretty it. What I wanted to say is just to end up, water electrolysis with green electricity can really decarbonize your entire economy and not only at very small demo stage, but at very large scales area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raymond Schmidt. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes. Hi, this is Hector Maza from uh, Guinea Inc. Uh, just had a question. In your assumptions of uh, cost and CapEx for uh, comparisons you made there between Alkaline and PEM, what scale were you considering? Yeah, we, we, we are targeting large scales there. So we, we have our 20 megawatt platforms we're basing ourselves on. And this is completed actually with additional R&D we are doing in our system. And in addition to that, the uh, economies of scale we can achieve with a new plant we are building now in Notodon for our uh, atmospheric alkaline systems. Yeah. So the, the, the main uh, cost driver, well, you're going to reduce to one third the cost of alkaline? Economies of scale. Okay. Yeah. Most of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the questions. Yes. Hello. Gerhard Spreitz from Bosch. Uh, imagine an off-grid solution. Uh, there we have renewable energies, maybe only during daytime. Uh, how does this affect your economy of scale? So it, 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 it doesn't affect the economies of scale. It affects actually the, the TCO of your project itself because you are going to run this capex a lower time period over the day. But the, the slide I show you for big capacities, 25% is OPEX, 75, uh, 25 is CAPEX, 75 is OPEX. So the bigger the scale, the lower the impact on the CAPEX actually on your TCO area. And this is actually the advantage you might have. Of course, in the end, it's always better to use your CAPEX as much as possible. Eh? But you can find some business cases there, especially when you get to these prices of $20 uh, dollars per megawatt hour in some countries where you can find a real business case, maybe running this electrolyzer only eight to 10 years a day, uh, a day yeah. 10 hours a day, sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much for the questions from the audience. Okay, uh, I'm wondering, you mentioned what should happen in the future to make a step forward. What do you expect to be like the main driver at the moment we see all the young students around the world protesting do you where do you think is the change coming from oh it's 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 a change of mindset that's what i believe needs to happen yeah people are too uh, fossil fuel focused today and and this needs to change and i think like everything it takes one or two generation to change so i i'm too old already actually i still hope <laughs> to see the hygiene economy before i retire but it's gonna be for the youngest uh, people actually to make it really happen there yeah so it, it's good to see people young people to be aware of it um 
just a bit sad to see that older people don't want to make the move there. Okay, so we hope to see a change in the future. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you.